Welcome to Sports Doctor. Sports Doctor is a live presentation, so we encourage you to call into the show and ask your questions on injury, rehab, training, or technique. We'll be taking your calls shortly. Call 767-8884 for your direct line to Sports Doctor. Here's your host for tonight's program, medical reporter Joe Chapana. Good evening and welcome to Sports Doctor, brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center. I'm Joe Chapana. We are live uh, this Thursday and uh, we're talking about general sports injuries. So whatever your game is, whatever your sport, if uh, you've injured yourself, we certainly want to hear from you. Or if you're interested in preventing injuries in the future, we definitely want to hear from you as well. Uh, with us tonight to take your calls, we have Dr. John Salvo, who's an orthopedic surgeon with Hahnemann Sports Medicine in Philadelphia and Marlton. And next to him is Dave Anselmo, who is a physical therapist with Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab with locations in Sicklerville, Berlin, Woodbury, and their brand new location in Washington Township. At the end of the program, we're going to give you numbers to reach the center closest to you if you would like to take advantage of their free evaluation offer. Uh, to do that, you'll need to schedule an appointment. And again, we'll give you the numbers for the individual centers nearest you at the end of the program. So stay tuned for that. Right now, though, we are talking about general sports injuries. And Dave, we'll start it with you. Just uh, a lot of people uh, interested in getting back to uh, some form of exercise. And maybe they haven't done it for uh, quite some time. What advice would you have for those individuals? I recommend anyone who has not uh, participated in any type of exercise program for six months or longer to go back to their family physician just to get a medical clearance for any type of underlying problems they might have like cardiac or orthopedic problems that might endanger them and something that cause further problems or possibly death if it's any type of cardiovascular. Type okay, of and uh, a lot of people actually moving outside and being outside playing sports or exercising. Dr. Salvo, that can pose different risk. What other areas should athletes and coaches be aware of in preventing injuries? Um, big thing you need to be aware of, especially at this time of year, is dehydration with all the heat out there. Um, the coaches and the trainers need to keep an eye on the kids that are out there, look for the, uh, uh, any signs of dehydration, they're getting glazed over, they feel weak, getting dizzy, a little bit confused, anything like that, they want to be very careful about it and uh, sit them down and better safe than sorry, hydrate them and just wait for the next day. It's kind of a conflict because you want to push them because you want them to be in shape, but at the same time you have to worry about health risks. Yeah, but you still have to worry about the, the kids' safety. That's still the bottom line. Everybody wants to go out and play, but the bottom line is their safety. Okay, let's uh, put up the phone numbers, and if you have questions about maybe an injury you've suffered or uh, an injury you'd like to prevent, one 888 Put you through to us toll-free live. Also, 856-767-8884. Some people prefer to email, and if that is you, we have an email address that you can take advantage of. That is WPSJTV at AOL.com, and we'll check our email uh, questions midway through the program. Again, toll-free, we're one 888 You're watching Sports Doctor, brought to you by Cross Keys Physical Therapy and Aquatic Rehab Center. Uh, Dave, as a uh, fall sports athletes will be racing to get in shape. What kind of injuries uh, can they be aware of or should they be aware of? Well, I see a lot of, I see a lot of sprains and strains that occur. Um, what they like to explain a little difference between a sprain and a strain. A sprain is basically injury to a ligament which attaches a bone to a bone. If you can see this model right here, you can explain, see that right there. And a strain is an injury to the tendon which attaches the muscle to the bone. Which is here. I think a lot of those injuries occur because a lot of Athletes get out there and they just go out and start to participate in their sporting and don't really properly warm up. And I think it's so important nowadays that you really have to warm up to get the blood circulating into the joints to prevent injury from occurring. You know, just like your car, you, when you wake up in the morning, you start your car up, you let it run a little bit before you race it. Well, your body is very similar in that you want to get the blood flowing through it to prevent injury from occurrence. So you need to get the blood into the joint to prevent injury from occurrence. And what about afterwards? Is it important to uh, yes. do the same? Just as important to stretch afterwards as well because you want to cool down the muscle as well. So a lot of people, they start to run real hard. After you're done, your muscles are still real tight and real tense, so you want to stretch it afterwards and cool it down. Okay, Dr. Savile, let's talk about the ACL and uh, particularly how it relates to uh, adolescent female athletes. So we hear they're more prone. Uh, what's happening with that? Well, actually, uh, it's really multifactorial. It has been shown in, uh, in studies in sports medicine literature that women are more prone, um, two to eight times more prone to an ACL injury when they're playing the same organized sports as, as men. And it's multifactorial. It has to do with their anatomy, 
It has to do, uh, there's some hormonal factors. Um, it has to do with the way they're built, their reaction time of their hamstrings, the overall strength of the hamstrings. Um, there's really no one factor mm -hmm. that they can point to and say that this is the reason women are more prone to these injuries than men, and therefore it's difficult to prevent that kind of injury. Is there anything they can do at all to prevent uh, that type of? Um, it, it's, it's, it's really hard because there's really no brace out there that can prevent any uh, ACL injury. Um, as far as uh, uh, strengthening and working with the therapists and athletic trainers on sports specific exercises so the muscles are in tune to the kind of cutting twisting activities they're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, that can help but nothing has really been shown to uh, prevent it. Okay and uh, what are some symptoms of an ACL injury? What, what should people look for? Well the most, the most common symptom of a uh, com complete ACL tear is it's usually not a contact injury. It's usually um, when the patient plants their foot and then pivots. And what happens is uh, we can see on this, the model of the knee here, it has all the muscles pulled away. And if we bend the knee, the, uh, if we can zoom in, this, this structure right here in the middle of the knee, that's the anterior cruciate ligament. And basically what it does is it keeps the knee from shifting on like this. If I turn it sideways, you can really see it. Shifting like this. So what happens, they plant their foot the, the thigh bone goes one way, the shin bone goes the other way, and they feel or hear a pop in their knee. And they uh, usually have uh, significant swelling within a couple of hours. Okay, and what options do people have that suffer this type of injury? Is, is it always surgery? No, it's not always surgery. I mean, the options always break down into either surgery or no surgery. And initially, um, pretty much across the board, we treat people conservatively, let the swelling come down get the range of motion back, work with the trainers and the therapists so they can get their strength back in full range of motion, and then we assess them, and it's individualized. Um, if they want to continue with cutting, twisting activities and, and they're young, these are the people who are more uh, going to be uh, more likely to have the surgery. If they are older individuals who don't do a lot of cutting, twisting activities and they have um, enough stability with strengthening and bracing, then they don't need surgery. Okay, let's talk about recovering from the ACL surgery. Dave, I know this is something you work with a lot of patients uh, after the reconstructive surgery. Uh, how long is rehab? Well, it depends on a couple of factors. The first factor is what type of graft the patient and the, and the surgeon that decide to use. Um, there's a couple of different options. I'm sure uh, Dr. Saibola could talk a little bit about them, but first, we know in rehab, if they use the patella tendon graft, it takes another three weeks to rehab them back sometimes two to three weeks, but it depends because it's another surgery that they have to, they have to do, and it's another area we need to address in rehab. Um, also, different factors like um, is, the, is the patient in good shape prior to having the surgery? Uh, statistics show us that people that are in very good shape have healthier soft tissue, better blood supply, and they don't have to go through the soreness factors during the rehab period. Um, different things, are they compliant to coming into therapy? Are they coming in three times a week? Are they doing their home exercises? Things like that are all factors that really are really play big when it comes to rehabbing them back and getting them back as fast as possible. Um, so in general, it takes uh, like six to eight months to get them back to be able to return back to doing what they usually do in a, in a sporting event, depending on what the doctor decides. A lot of times they have to return them back with a brace, mm -hmm. but um, usually six to eight weeks, eight okay. months. Okay, you are watching Sports Doctor. We're talking about the ACL right now, but really our topic tonight is just general sports injury. So if there is another uh, area that you would like addressed, you can certainly call us toll free with your question at 1-888-634-7488. Locally, our number is 856-767-8884. If uh, you'd like to have someone take a look at uh, what's troubling you, uh, Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center is offering free evaluations for the next two weeks. And we're gonna give you numbers for the individual locations uh, for you to take advantage of that offer. Right now though, toll free, it's 1-888-634-7488. We have uh, Dr. John Salvo with us, an orthopedic surgeon from Hahnemann Sports Medicine, and also Dave Anselmo with Cross Keys. Uh, talk about the, uh, the different types of surgery uh, in the ACL reconstructive uh, procedure. I understand there's a number of different options. Uh, there are different options and the options really have to do with the graft choice. Um, the technical aspects of the surgery and putting the, uh, making the new ACL and putting the graft back are, are the same. You're basically recreating the anatomy inside the knee. Uh, the graft choices, uh, we can actually see on this, this would be a good model to show it. Um, one of the common graft choices is using the central third of the patellar tendon. Take a piece of bone from the patella or the kneecap piece of bone down where it inserts on the tibia and the central third of this. And you take that out and then through the arthroscope um, or, the, or the camera, we can put it in through a tunnel and recreate the ACL. 
Um, the other option for when they're using their own tissues is hamstring tendons. Hamstrings are the muscles that come around the back of the knee mm -hmm. and allow flexion of the knee. Um, we take them from the inside aspect of the knee. Um, I don't know if we have them on this model. That's, well, we don't have it on the model. We take two of the hamstrings from the inside aspect of the knee and uh, um, suture them together to make um, a, a, tendon, a, a new ligament and fix them in the same way as we fix the, uh, the bones, the, the patellar tendon. Uh, the other choice is allograft, which is donated tissue. And again, that can either be a patellar tendon, similar to when they take it, uh, you take it from your, uh, yourself, but also an Achilles allograft can be used or a hamstring allograft. Okay, our phone line again, 1-888-634-7488, locally 856-767-8884. Talking general sports injuries, anything at all, we've got a caller from Washington Township. Margaret, welcome to Sports Doctor. Hi, my son is going out for midget football, and they're practicing in all this heat, and every day he comes back, he's all flushed and red. I'm wondering, what can I do? And what does that mean? Is there any precautions I should take? First of all, we hate the term midget football, don't we? <laughs> That's the one thing. It's, um, anyway, uh, wh wh what, can they, what can this mother do? Well, um, some of the things you want to watch out for, I mean, coming in from, from the heat, certainly they're going to look flush, but you want to make sure he's not, he's not dizzy, that he's not getting nauseated, um, that he's not confused. And those are signs of dehydration. Otherwise, you want to make sure that they're taking water breaks at the, uh, during the practices. And a lot of teams, what they're doing with the severe heat is they're practicing very early in the morning or late at night or both to try to avoid the excess heat in the middle of the day. It's tough to be a parent and watch your, uh, your child be pushed um, in this type of weather. Yeah. What about um, their intake of liquids before exercise? Is that, is that key? Um, it, it, it's, it is important, but it's more the um, constant intake of fluids and replacing what you're losing. If you take in too much fluid beforehand, your body is still going to process it and get rid of it and just keep what it needs. Um, if you are taking in not enough fluid as you are losing it and sweating, that's when you're going to get into dehydration. And any uh, thoughts as to uh, water versus sports drinks? Um, the sports drinks, some of them do have a, a do very well with replacement of electrolytes and they have calories in there as well, but water is the real, that's the main thing you want to replace, that's what they're losing. Okay, uh, we're talking general sports related injuries. Uh, you're watching Sports Doctor. We're brought to you by Krosky's Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center. Locations in Sicklerville, Berlin, Woodbury, and their brand new location in Washington Township. We're coming up on our first break tonight. Want to remind you, we're with Dr. John Salvo, who's an orthopedic surgeon at Hahnemann Sports Medicine, and also Dave Anselmo from Krosky's Physical Therapy. Taking your questions at 1 888 634 7488. Before we do go to break, though, we do have another caller on the line uh, from Somerdale, and the caller's name is Prima. Is that right? Prima. Prima. Welcome to Sports Doctor. How are you tonight? I'm doing fine, thank you. My just had an ACL surgery done, and she's, I think she's doing pretty good. But I, I have this question. Uh, I have come across a couple of people whose, when one ACL was torn after few years, the other leg's ACL got torn. My colleague just had this, you know, particular problem. So what I, um, my concerns are when you're, when you repair one ACL, you're putting so much pressure on your other leg while rehab. Do you think it causes strain on the other leg? Okay. Does uh, one ACL lead to another? Oh, not necessarily. I mean, obviously, like you said, you do put more strain on the other one when you're rehabbing it because you're, a lot of people come in, they walk differently. But during the rehab process, you should be strengthening not only the, the involved leg, but also the other one as well. Uh, we always encourage the, the patient to do both, um, but always work a little harder on the, the involved one. But it's very important to uh, exercise the other one as well because, you know, you, they both got to hold you up. You know? So we recommend you to do the same exercises on the opposite leg as well. Raymond, thank you for watching. Thank you for the phone call. One more call before we go to break. Uh, Frank from Williamstown, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Joe, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Frank? I'm all right. Um, I actually was just playing basketball outside a little while ago in my driveway, and the cement is, like, really high up from where the grass is on the side, mm -hmm. and I really twisted my ankle, and uh, there's a huge, huge ball on the left side. Like, it's like a, just a big swelling on the left side of my foot. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, best way to... Right now i got ice on it, but... 
it's really huge right now. Mm -hmm. What is the number for 911? I've heard. <laughs> now, now, what does this sound uh, like? Anything? Well, most most of these kind of things are, are ankle sprains, but what you want to worry about is that it's not fractured. You've already you've already done the first important thing. You've gotten yourself off it, and you've gotten ice on it. Um, if you have any kind of compression wrap, such as the knee bandage or anything around uh, the house, it would be good to wrap it up and try to keep the swelling down. Keep it elevated tonight and ice it up. Um, try to stay off it as well. You want to get x-rays uh, to make sure it's not, it's not broken. Um, okay. If it's that swollen, that, that's what you want to make sure in the next day or so. What's the, the rice? Is yeah. Yeah. You, want to, you want to ice it for 20 minutes on and take it off for 20 minutes and reapply it again for 20 minutes. You could do that all night long if you like. But the, what you don't want to do is you don't want to ice it longer than a 30 minute period of time. Um, you will get the reverse effect that, that uh, if you do that and it actually could swell up more. So you don't want to do that. So the key thing is I tell people always 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. You could do that uh, six to eight times through the night if you like, um, but it will definitely be helpful and elevated as well. When, when should someone switch to heat? Because I know heat is often uh, used as a remedy. Uh, or should they not? Some people, some people react better to, to heat than they do ice. I mean, so um, general, some people say 72 hours, mm -hmm. um, but I know some people that react better to uh, heat than they do ice, but I always say 72 hours ice and then switch to heat, but some people don't like to switch to heat either, but mm -hmm. whatever works best for them, but we always do ice for the first 72 hours, and then, and then it allows you to switch to heat if you like. And if you switch to heat, should you do that 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off thing as well, or does it matter? No, not necessarily 20 minutes, 20 minutes off, but I would... That, that's mainly with the ice. Okay, back to the phone lines. Uh, Mike from Bordentown. Welcome to Sports Doctor. How are you? How you doing? Good. I'm 29 year old male. Mm -hmm. I've had a ACL on, uh, in 1992, and in 98 I had a patella tendon and ACL surgery. I just re injured my left knee, which is the patella tendon again. Well, I'm, they're not sure what the injury is, but someone my age, 29 years old, I've heard of glucosamine, I've heard of uh, mini knee replacements. I mean, what, as a person, as myself, want to get back into sports, mm -hmm. do to uh, get better? Dr. Salvo? Um, l let me ask you again, make sure I have it straight. You hurt your right knee in 92? Yeah, that was an ACL. And the left knee was when? 98 was a patella tendon, ACL, and I, and I just re-injured it again on uh, May 15th. Okay. Either. They say it might be a meniscus or ACL again. Okay. Um, as far as uh, answering the, the first question about glucosamine, glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate are, are, are supplements that work uh, basically to uh, basically work with arthritis. Um, so if you have arthritis or, or even the early signs of arthritis with cartilage breakdown, um, it does relieve symptoms and it does seem to work for a lot of people. But it's individualized. It's something you want to try out and you want to ch check out with your physician first. Talk to your family doctor. Or if you, uh, you, when you go to get your knee checked out with your orthopedic surgeon, ask him about it. Um, that will take, it can help with arthritic symptoms. As far as, the, it sounds like the left knee is, has a significant injury if they're thinking about the ACL again, uh, that's something that may need to be addressed or at least rehabbed um, until you can get the full motion and strength back. Um, as far as long term for sports, if your knees are stable and you, and you have good strength, there's, uh, there, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to continue with sports. Mike, we can do a whole show just on you, it sounds like. <laughs> We're going to give you the number at the end of the program for the uh, Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center closest to you. They're offering that free evaluation offer. We're going to do that at the end of the program. We have Sheena holding on the line. Hang on. We're going to come back to your uh, question in just a moment. We are going to take a short break. You're watching Sports Doctor. We're talking general sports injuries tonight. Our toll-free number is 1-888-634-7488. More of our program right after this. Hi, I'm Kevin Ross from the Kansas City Chiefs. When I need physical therapy, I chose Cross Keys Physical Therapy, one of the leading rehab centers in South Jersey. Cross Keys Physical Therapy offers aquatic therapy programs that will help you strengthen weak muscles and improve your flexibility. Our highly skilled physical and occupational therapists are experienced with working with athletes and non-athletes alike. So if you need to get back to work or back to play, Cross, Cross Keys Physical, physical Therapy. Sickleville, Woodbury, and Berlin. 
And in addition to Sicklerville, Woodbury, and Berlin, their brand new center just opened, Washington Township. Uh, you want to check that out. We'll give you numbers for that center and all the other Cross Keys uh, Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Centers at the end of the program. Take advantage of that free evaluation offer. Right now, we're giving you this number. Questions about sports injuries you may have. 1-888-634-7488. We have Sheena, who's holding very patiently from Somerdale. Sheena, thank you for holding. What can we do for you tonight? Um, I have a question. My sister just got the surgery on her ACL, and she's at 95 degrees after seven weeks. How, is that normal, and what types of exercises should she be doing to keep bending her knee more? 95 degrees after seven weeks? Well, um after seven weeks, 95 degrees is, uh, th that's a little slow, but everything is a range. By, s by seven to eight weeks, you really want to try to have that full flexion back, which is 130 degrees, 140 degrees, depends on, uh, the, depends on the patient. Um, but everything is a range, and it can go from everybody, some people get their range back by four weeks, some people it, it takes longer. The key is if she's making progress. If she's gotten stuck there for about three weeks, then they may have a problem. But if she's still making progress and getting five, ten degrees a week, then I, I'd, I'd sit on it and wait. I wasn't real good at geometry in, in high school. What, what do you mean by 95 degrees? How's that, how's that measured? Um, I guess if we have a knee, maybe. We yeah. Let's um, not come off. Uh, if you look at the knee, knee the knee model, well, e either one. Basically, zero is all the way straight. 90 degrees is when your knee is bent, mm -hmm. like a right, a right angle, okay. and then full flexion is all the way down to here. Okay. Um, and we measure it with, uh, with goniometers, which measure angles, um, so we can be accurate and we can talk to each other and make sure we're talking about the same numbers. Maximum degree should be? Depends on the patient. Oh. Look at the other knee. Okay. Look at the normal side. Very good. Uh, back to the phone lines we go. Uh, Lou? from, is it Haddon Township? Lou, welcome to Sports Doctor. What can we do for you tonight? Thank you. How are you doing tonight, guys? Good. Um, I have a general injury as far as shin splints. Um, I've had this before. I'm 36 years old and I had it in college. But now I started running this year and they're on both legs um, about midway up and it feels like they're in the, kind of like almost the calf behind the shin and I've tried things that I'm accustomed to as far as trying to get rid of them, but they're there and they're not going away. And um, it's, it's pretty some severe pain at sometimes. Mm -hmm. Persistent shin splints, 36-year-old male, what can he do? You can take it. I don't know what he's doing. Are you doing any stretching or icing at all? Or? Um, I, as far as resistant ex exercises, put one foot in front of the top of the toes and you, 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 you know, uh, as far as push against each other. Right. And then I try to lift with them. Um, I was told this exercise uh, uh, a while back, I was in high school actually, where you put weight on the edge of your toe mm -hmm. and kind of lift for the, um, the shins in front like that. Okay. And then when I had him in college, it worked really well. But now um, I even took weeks off to rest. As soon as I start running again, after like two days, you can feel them come back on again. Both in, you know, I never had them in both legs before, and uh, they're just <laughs> not going away. Well, there's a couple different things that can be factors as well. I don't know about your shoes. Um, could be a factor too. You're going to have some good cushion there, as well as the type of surfaces you're running on. If you're running on real hard concrete, it's not a good factor as well. Um, you like to try to run on a little more, maybe. Uh, grass or a little more, uh, some of the tracks now have a little more cushiony um, turf. So uh, that will help you as well. But you want to do a lot of stretching and uh, after you do it, right after you're done doing your running, you want to do, you want to ice them down. That should help you as well to take away some of the soreness, some trauma to the area. Um, if you're not really sure about some of the stretches, I, I recommend you to uh, contact one of our offices and we'll go through that with you. And you can come in and we'll uh, show you how to do it. Okay, and we're going to give you the numbers for those offices at the end of the program. Again, they're in Sicklerville, Berlin. Woodbury, their brand new locations in Washington Township. It's Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center, uh, sponsor of Sports Doctor. We have uh, Dr. John Salvo with us tonight, an orthopedic surgeon from Hahnemann Sports Medicine, and also Dave Anselmo with Cross Keys Physical Therapy. He's a physical therapist. Questions coming from email, which our email address is wpsjtv at aol.com. We have a David from Washington Township who writes, I hurt my knee three years ago. It still clicks sometimes when I walk. What does this mean, and will it ever go away? Clicking sound in the knee, is that, is that normal? Uh, clicking can, can be normal, especially after uh, an injury. The key is if you're not having swelling and the clicking doesn't hurt, and you're not, your knee is not locking up or giving out on you, then, then it's not know. anything we worry about. <laughs> and you know what? You have a click. Uh, it's, uh, that if, if it doesn't have any of those other factors, it's something we don't we don't worry about. So it's, uh, that doesn't necessarily lead, lead to anything, it's just no, something that unless happens. you have pain, swelling, or your knee is giving out on you, or some other symptoms, just a click in and of itself 
uh, that's not anything to be concerned about. David, thank you for your email. Another one from Jim who writes, when I try to run in the hot weather, over 90 he puts, I get very short of breath. This doesn't happen inside on the treadmill. Aside from staying inside in the air conditioning, what can I do? Out of breath from the heat. Um, Don't run. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you to get a little accommodated to, accommodate to the heat a little bit. You want to break up your, your running uh, periods just like they do in football. They break up into two different sessions. If you really want to run in it, you want to get a little used to it, go in small spurts and build your way up into it. Also, I recommend you not to wear um, like double clothes or heavy clothes, anything tight around the neck or the arms or the waist. That, that's shown that it, it actually helps to increase your perspiration and actually will take away some of the... Is, is, running, on, is running on the treadmill um, as beneficial as running on uh, open surfaces? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it some say it is. Uh, I, uh, I particularly like it for a lot of people because I know what type of surface they're running on. I know some of the, the treadmills that have real good tracking have good cushion and some of the people go out running on the streets. It's real, it's real traumatic on the joints because they're running on concrete, which is really... Uh, mm -hmm tough on the joints. So mm -hmm. if you're running on a treadmill, you, you have some type of cushion on the, on the deck so you know that it's a lot more forgiving on the joints. So For the gentleman that, that called in a while ago about shin splints, is, is um, being on the that treadmill be something that might be? For as well, yeah. Okay, so there you go. Uh, we're going to give you the numbers for the, uh, the Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center nearest you because they're offering free evaluations for the next two weeks. All you have to do is schedule your appointment, okay? And you can do that by uh, dialing up the following numbers. Uh, for Sicklerville, it is 856-728-1900. In Berlin area, 856-719-8111. The Woodbury office is 853 or I'm sorry, 856-853-0988. Brand new Washington Township office. Check this out, 856-374-3707. Again, uh, to take advantage of the free evaluation offer for the next two weeks, call any of those numbers and someone will be uh, there to uh, set you up. I want to thank uh, Dr. John Salvo for being with us, an orthopedic surgeon, Hahnemann Sports Medicine, Philadelphia and Marlton, first time on the program, did very well. Thank you very much for having me. like to have you back. Dave Anselmo also, our veteran, who is a physical therapist with Cross Keys Physical Therapy. Again, uh, we will be back, uh, in September 12th will be our next show. It's a Thursday night at 9, we'll be live and uh, we'll be presenting another topic for you uh, as you've seen tonight general sports injuries. Again, uh, feel free to take advantage of the free evaluations offer uh, from Cross Keys Physical Therapy. And uh, in Turnersville area, I understand we're going to be on Channel 78 for our next program. So that's, uh, look for us there, Channel 78, September 12th, our next program, Thursday night at 9. Until then, I'm Joe Chapana for Cross Keys Physical Therapy Aquatic Rehab Center. Stay well.